Vectors and calculus, day one. A vector is represented by a directed line segment. Vectors are equal if they have the same length and direction. In other words, the same slope. We have a vector AB here. We have the initial point A and the terminal point B. We denote a vector with a little vector sign and we write the term, uh, initial point first and then the terminal point. So if we had another vector, Let's say we had the point C and the point D, then this would be vector CD. It would not be vector DC. A vector is in standard position if the initial point is at the origin. Let's say we had this vector out in space here, and this was the point negative 10, uh, 3, and this was the point negative 2, uh, let's say 11. Well, that's a vector between two points, and we, if we drag this initial point, put it right on 0, 0, to get to the other point, we'd have to go over 8 units to the right, and then we would have to go, well, 8 units up. This point now would be the point 8, 8, because then it would be going the same distance right and left. When a vector is in standard position, we only use one point to denote it, and then we'll use what we call chevrons to say that this is a vector, but now it's in standard position. The component form of this vector is chevron v1, v2, or in other words, the x and the y. With parametric functions, our position is given by x of t and y of t. So the position vector at any time t is x of t and y of t. So we can have functions that represent this value at given times. So maybe when t was 2, the x was 8 and the y became 8. Velocity vector is a derivative of the position and the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity, just like normal. A particle moves in the xy plane so that any time t, the position of the particle is given parametrically. Find the velocity vector when t is equal to 1. So we're going to find the velocity vector, and that is uh, 3t squared plus 8t, and 4t to the third minus 3t squared. And we'll evaluate that when t is equal to 1. So then we get uh, 3 plus 8 is 11, and then we get 4 minus 3 is 1. The acceleration vector is the derivative of velocity, so we get 6t plus 8 and 12t squared minus 6t. We'll evaluate this when t is equal to 1. That's equal to uh, 6 plus 8 is 14 and 12 minus 6 is 6. So there is the acceleration vector when t is equal to 1. Find the acceleration vector when t equals 2. All right, we can do that. Here's the acceleration vector. Let's plug 2 in. We get 12 plus 8 is 20. And when we plug 2 in, we get uh, 12 times 4 is 48. And we're going to minus 12 from that. We get 36. The magnitude, or the length of a vector, is denoted by what looks like absolute value. But when we're dealing with vectors, the absolute value symbols uh, mean magnitude. And it's the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. Imagine uh, a vector in standard position. And we want to know how long that vector is, which, by the way, represents the speed of the vector also. Well, we have, let's say, the point uh, 6, 4. The length of this vector is now the hypotenuse of the right triangle that we could draw given the two values. This would be 6, this would be 4. So the length of the hypotenuse would be, uh, what, 36 plus 16. That is uh, 52. It would be the square root of 52 just by using the Pythagorean theorem. So this would be square root of 52. So there's nothing, there's no big secret here. The magnitude is just the length of the vector, or the length of the hypotenuse when you draw that right triangle. A particle moves in the xy plane so that any time t, t greater than or equal to 0, the position of the particle is given by 
So uh, it's given parametrically, uh, an equation for the x and an equation for the y. Find the magnitude of the velocity vector when t is equal to 1. Well, they want the magnitude of the velocity. So we have 2t plus 3 and 3t squared minus 6t. We'll evaluate this when t is equal to 1. So the velocity vector when t equals 1 is 2 plus 3. That gives us 5. And uh, 3 minus 6 is negative 3. There's your velocity vector when t is equal to 1. And we want the magnitude of the velocity vector. That's the square root of 25 plus 9, which is the square root of 34. That is a scalar answer, which means one single value. And that'll be the length or the magnitude of the velocity vector when t equals 1. Another example, position of particle is given by x equals 4 cosine t and y equals 2 sine t for t greater than or equal to 0. Find a velocity and acceleration when t equals pi over 2. The velocity is equal to negative 4 sine of t and 2 cosine of t. We're going to evaluate this when t equals pi over 2. So that's a negative 4 sine of pi over 2 is 1 and 2 times the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So the velocity vector at time pi over 2 is negative 4, 0. The acceleration vector is let's see, negative 4 cosine of t and negative 2 sine of t. We'll evaluate this when t equals pi over 2. Negative 4 times 0, that gives us 0. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. There's the acceleration vector. What is the speed when t is equal to pi over 2? Speed is the magnitude of the velocity vector. That's going to be the square root of 16 plus 0. So we got 16 plus 0, and that's equal to the square root of 16 which is equal to 4. So that's the speed of the vector when uh, t is pi over 2. Draw the path of the particle and show the velocity vector at t equals pi over 2. Let's look at the equations up here. I'm going to rewrite those. x equals 4 cosine of t. And this goes all the way up to the top here. And y is equal to 2 sine of t. And we're supposed to draw the path of this particle. If I divide by 4, I get x over 4 equals cosine of t. And dividing by 2 here, we get y over 2 equals sine of t. And we can use the Pythagorean identity that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Now, if we square both sides, we get x squared over 16 plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. That's an ellipse. So the path of the particle is elliptical. Now, I know how to draw this ellipse. Uh, we go right and left four, one, two, three, four, and negative one, two, three, four. The center being at zero, zero, and then up and down two units. Up two, down two, and then we draw the ellipse. But where does the particle start? Let's start at zero because we want for t greater than or equal to 0. So we get to start at 0. If I plug 0 in for the x, I get the point uh, 4, this cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0. So I get 4, 0. That's the starting point. So this thing starts here, and then we work our way in a counterclockwise fashion. Because when t, let's say, is pi over 2, plug pi over 2 in for cosine, that's 0. We get the point 0 and plug pi over 2 in for sine, we get 0, 2. So going from 0 to pi over 2, I'm going from the point 4, 0 to 0, 2. That means this particle is going in this direction. 
Draw the path of the particle. Done. And show the velocity vector at t equals pi over 2. Uh, let's get the velocity vector. The velocity vector will be uh, negative 4 sine of t and 2 cosine of t. Let's plug pi over 2 in here. We get negative 4 times 1 and 2 times 0. So we get negative 4, 0. When we draw this velocity vector, if we draw it in standard position, then we would start at uh, the origin, and then we would draw the vector to negative 4, 0. But when we represent the velocity vector on the graph or on the path, then we put that vector where this particle is. And at pi over 2, this particle is at the point 0, 2. So we would draw this vector uh, up here to, symbol that, to symbolize uh, how the speed at which it's traveling or the velocity and also uh, where it is. Find the arc length from 0 to pi. The arc length is the integral of the speed and that ends up being 9.688. So we've taken the derivative, which is negative 4 sine t and 2 cosine, and we've squared those. So we've squared the x, we have squared the y, and taken the square root, that's speed, and then integrated from 0 to pi. Arc length is the integral of the speed of the vector, and this ends up being 9.688.